here. Now, again, the new information that we have, ladies and gentlemen, comes the way of not only Hazador Gaming on Twitter, but we had saw, we had seen a tweet from Inexile themselves where they were talking about customization and deep RPG elements for this game. Well, we have a full breakdown of what is going to consist of a new IP that isn't exclusive to Xbox that comes the way of Inexile, who is incredibly talented, and this is what Clockwork Revolution is going to have for us gamers. It's going to be a deep first-person shooter RPG. It's going to have dark humor. It's going to offer full character creation and customization, branching dialogue systems, massive reactivity. It's going to have steampunk-related weapons. It's going to have weapon crafting and modding. Uh, dynamic time bending combat which sounds dope uh interconnected role playing and it's and it's going to have crispy good and bad consequences very similar to what we saw from Ken Levine's BioShock you know you can you can uh take the the, the children and get extra powers or you can save them i don't know if that's going to be something similar to it but this sounds freaking dope let's get your hot take well i mean let's be honest uh in in exile has uh the last game they released was what wasteland 3 yes that was in august of 2020 yeah it's been so a while. they they they've had time to cook and and i believe that was already in development before microsoft purchased them you know what i'm saying so i feel like they've had at least three years to develop this game at minimum and i mean it, it sounds up the it, what we always say like they have studios that are rpg masters and Ex and exile is one of them and actually i mean whoever does their twitter is is amazing i love what they do i mean it, it's sometimes the, the most hilarious things and you look at what they they think about and, and how their humor is. I feel like it's going to gravitate in this game. I feel like we could see at least a launch window and, and, and show some more gameplay rather than the arguable cinematics that was shown, you know, earlier. I, I think they're, they're at a point where they want to be heard and this could be, a sleeper game. I, I, I think it would be a bombshell if they said it's going to come out this year. I, I feel like that's not going to happen. But what they're talking about is what we've experienced in many RPGs. The thing is, is that they're going like full on steampunk from what we've seen, and it's very very different in the ecosystem that they're going to build because i feel like they're doing it um true to the form of like a steampunk vibe and, and also i think there's going to be some in in the evil or good type thing i think there's going to be some choices that you're going to make and then you're going to regret making them type thing but you're going to laugh about it yep i feel like they're going to do a lot of of little nuanced uh, things that are even like social construct issues that you, you're not going to even realize you're doing. And then you make that choice. And then later that choice is going to be something that you didn't want. And now you're either going to push through it or try to back out in some way. I think that's, a, it would be an interesting element in an RPG that we, I mean, the last time I really felt like I experienced that was like new Vegas. Yes. Type you know what I mean? So I I feel like there's there's something there that they can only show us because like I said, they clearly if if you follow their Twitter, they have some dark humor in their head. You know what I mean? And they yeah. do they do some things that you're like you're like, is this funny? Is this like truthful? Like what are we doing here? So 
I, I'm just intrigued because they're already talking about it, and and that makes me feel like something's coming. It, it, maybe it's not the showcase, but I mean, we can read through the tea leaves and say you guys are talking about it more and more and more. Yep, it's it's a possibility, and and that intrigues me because it, it, it's one of those games like first person or not, I can play by myself and. Like, like I've always said, I love like like Fallout and stuff like that because I can switch between third and first person. I've actually found I've I've been playing more in first person now again. Me too. So, well, you know, it's I, I, weird. Yes, yeah, it's, it's weird, weird because you know, like it's it's like I've always wanted you know, like I'm a third person guy, and all of a sudden, like I feel more comfortable more and more in the first person. And I think it's the update. I think the frames feel better. Yeah. So, like, this game being a new release, a new IP, I think it has has the legs to be able to, to stand on and say, we're going to be a little different. We're going to still be your traditional RPG in a way, but maybe there's this little nuance that really catches people. Because that's what we're looking at at games at this point. Do they have that little little thing that really intrigues us? I, I believe that's why Cyberpunk is still relevant. You know what I mean? Because it has a different feeling to it. And, and and I feel like they have the possibility to do that because I feel like they have had the time to work on this game. And, and hopefully we want it polished at the end of the day. That's that's what we want. We don't want a bunch of bugs, even if it has a linear like uh, feeling to it, like a outer worlds or something like that. I think it would still gravitate because you have all these different elements that are involved including your choices which i think it seems like they're pushing towards that yeah the choice is going to be a big deal Uh, i'm very i'm very excited for it i'm i I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised and impressed with this game fuzzy you know i pulled uh a quote here now i wasn't sure because i wanted i I wanted to make sure before i said it but uh, as reported Prior to the announcement, it's a steampunk role-playing game led by the makers of Arkham, a steam, a Steamworks and Magic Obscura and powered, this is where it gets interesting, folks, by Epic's Unreal Engine 5. This is super excited because we just got a chance to see what a benchmarked Unreal Engine 5 game looks like running on the Series X. That is Hellblade, Senua Saga. I'm super stoked for this. This game looks like it's going to be big. It looks like it. And again, I know that we're all kind of cheaping out and saying, well, it reminds me of Bioshock. It does, sure. But I think it's going to be its own thing. Yeah. How excited are you for this game knowing that this could be announced this year at the showcase? And if it's not announced this year, which would be fine because there are a lot of games coming out, once we get the full workup of what this game looks like running on a series x i think it's going to be a game that is highly anticipated no matter when it releases well i I think the biggest thing like uh chris we kind of touched on it this this game i think since it's already been in development prior to the acquisition i think this is what phil and team saw that made them want to purchase them kind of thing so the, the the fact that a lot of times we heard some some you know, mumblings in the background between Booty and, and a few of the other, uh, you know, executives over at Xbox, that this was like a highlight of when they had all the teams kind of show their hand as far as what they've been working on. And a lot of the other teams were like jaw dropped after watching it. Um, and then seeing the demo last year, or actually, I guess it was, was it last year or early? Maybe it was earlier this year. Time is all kind of blended together for me right now. But um, it, it's it's a very interesting looking game. And it's going to be their first time really going into like a, a first person perspective. But they've always been great as far as storytelling and RPG mechanics. Like the Wasteland series. Well, before even the Wasteland series, a lot of the veterans or the main people there were the ones that worked on the original Fallout. Yep. And as much as I would like to also see maybe a, a remake of Fallout 1 and 2, but in like the third and first person perspective kind of thing, these were pro- these were like some of the main programmers and, and devs during that period for that storytelling, for the mechanics and, and for the choices and options that you have. And the fact that they have things where some of your options or your choices are going to have consequences where 
well, do you travel back in time to fix what you, you broke or do you kind of live with it or or is going back going to make things even worse kind of deal? Um, these are all interesting concepts for a game that, you know, we haven't really had something that really touches on like your choices actually mattering in a game kind of thing in a while. Like to some extent, you could look back at games like Mass Effect and such, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to see this. And, and the fact that it has that steampunk aesthetic and yep. that they're going to have weapons crafting and, and you know, the deep RPG mechanics that you kind of expect from them, what they've had in like Wasteland and things like that. I, I can't wait to see what this game is like. And, and the fact that it could come out this year. I mean, yeah, they've probably been cooking for a while, but that that like I wasn't really expecting this game, even though we saw it not too long ago. I wasn't expecting this thing until maybe 2026 kind of thing. Uh, you know, maybe it's like a cross gen launch mm-hmm. title. But if it comes out sooner and they have this thing ready to go, hey, I I, I got to figure out how much time I have between this, Indiana Jones, and whatever else Xbox is going to be throwing at us, which is probably somewhere in there as well type of deal. So, yeah, it, it's going to be a pretty hectic, you know, next few months or at least from now until the holidays. But, yeah, if this thing makes 2024, Ah, yeah, this this is going to be an extra loaded uh, second half of the year, and the flood is already started. So, yeah. <laughs> How excited are you for all of the, for the, this confirmation of things happening in this game? Um, I mean, I would say that it definitely seems like a little bit more than what you would think it is at face value, because there's a lot of comparisons to bioshock like right off the bat when you have like the dystopian like futuristic city from the past that you're traveling to in order to have first person combat and like fight against the man but like essentially the way that they're describing it and like when you realize what what type of games like in exile is like created in the past like the wasteland series and everything else that they've worked on um you realize there's a lot of opportunity for like a, a Bioshock type game for sure. Like there's definitely that type of inspiration there, but you have so much more with like the deep RPG elements, which honestly, like I feel like with Bioshock, when I played through it, like Bioshock's an amazing game, but every once in a while, like for, for multiple playthroughs, it'd be always nice to have more options or more things to do or more choices uh, in a game that's all about choice. But I, I think this might scratch that kind of itch where you where it kind of brings it into the future you have more choices and not only can you affect like your own story or like the way you play through, but it, it seems like what they're going for is like a a way to be able to affect the entire world and like what, what actually happens with like your environment and everything and the destruction and how the whole city was created. Um, So I'm definitely excited about these, these new um, things that have come to light. Like when I read that, when you sent it out, um, I, I really, that was my first time hearing about all these deep, deeper options here and it it makes it seem like so much more of what i really expected the game could be to begin with because it's like oh yeah we have another bioshock i hope it's okay like when you look at it without looking further but like when you think of all the possibilities like i i try not to like set myself up for like too much hope to where like i feel like there's a real problem with like games in general where you you kind of build yourself up to think this is what this game is and that's what it's going to be like we saw people try and put starfield in a box or like when you saw pal world before it came out like a week i didn't realize it was a survival crafting game until like a week before it came out or until (laughs) i actually played it so i feel like there's a lot of things that don't really get communicated very well in like the preview stages and and people kind of run and hype things and use that to fuel other arguments or discourse about gaming so i'm i'm excited to see what they build with all these tools and i feel like there's a lot of uh a lot of things that can happen it, it definitely is shaping up to be more of a type of game that i would want to play because wasteland wasn't really in my alley with like the like i'm not a big like uh turn-based guy or like strategy game guy um but definitely like a, a live action like i mean kotor is probably the closest i ever got to turn base so i i'm wondering how like the gameplay is like whether it's like completely um completely like fluid action like a a bioshock is or if you have like that time travel element if they use that to like help um set up maybe some more strategic options being like the 
the pedigree that their company has with like the wasteland titles so it's going to be interesting to see like how it actually plays but on top of that with like the the release schedule like um speaking to that like i feel like microsoft's in a position with like xbox and like the first party titles that we have that i don't necessarily think they need to rush to like hack anything else in because we already have like the four titles that we saw from like the the previous like the early beginning of the year update i can't remember what they call it anymore and like the other business updates. update that yeah, they had the, yeah yeah the business update and like the beginning of the year sh- like uh preview but i mean if you think about it like we have those like microsoft titles but then you also still have call of duty coming yep. um like we got avowed in indiana jones and uh, did aura come out yet or is that also the fall that's that's uh, i believe that's the fall but i yeah. think aura is pc only to yeah start. yeah right not mistaken w- which, which still it's like we have a, we have avowed on the xbox we have we have indiana jones coming we have call of duty and possibly like anything else in between like do yeah, we... flight sim 24 yeah you know, there's, there's quite a few things yeah like I, I don't really think necessarily that, that they have to rush this game to get it out and we're really getting to that point where um like their strategy is coming to fruition where they don't they don't need to crowd out the year like they they have a consistent release schedule where they could set this game up to be uh the the spring release of next year or or the fall release if it's a bigger game with more potential whatever they whatever they'd like i don't think they necessarily like it'd be amazing to have it this year but when am i gonna play it (laughs) like i don't know um because because i think i think also with the ability to because honestly like i'm not a big like call of duty fan and i mean this might come up with later topics but i like honestly if call of duty's in game pass i'm gonna spend some time playing call of duty now that I don't have to pay anything extra for it. So like I feel like that extra crowds out the end of the year, which we also have, like you said, we have the uh um we have the Starfield update. Like, I mean, I still play Halo almost every single day. Like so Me too. continue yeah. to support that. Like I'm really curious as to what they're doing with the future of Halo Infinite at the moment. But comparatively, like PlayStation used to be good for having two like you were saying, like two or three like big tent pole titles, but Honestly, they got really lucky this year that Hell Divers took off. Like Hell Divers was amazing. I've been enjoying it, but it turns out that uh, Microsoft's strategy of releasing on PC seems to be something that they also want to um, follow up with. But they also decided to follow the strategy that kind of grounded Xbox in the Xbox One generation, where they're like you said, using the third party titles to pad out their ecosystem and and we've seen that that doesn't necessarily work so i think that's a big part of the shift that we're seeing but also a reason why xbox doesn't have to race to stay ahead like they could they could put this game wherever it's right to make sure it has time to breathe and that it has time to be discovered by players and that it has enough time to be finished and polished because we've also seen what happens when the games don't release in like a full-on state so I mean, I'm excited to see where it drops wherever, and I'm glad to see it's more than just what it what it appears to be at surface level. Yeah.